a, like a bulb and then have little uh, mm -hmm. display or different yeah. types of um, uh, designs in it. And you have little ornament balls with the silver coat and just hanging in your tree. Okay. So you buy the glass with the silver coat, you just it don't comes, spray it. It comes this way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. see, like, oh, this is a grand music. So the thing is, if you want to make something yeah. we've got to hang on the wall, you're better off yeah. with the silver coat. Oh, I have my own. Yeah, from my standpoint, I mean, it's oh, okay. up to you what, what okay. the application is, but yes, because if you get just any of that glass there, you, you're you not going to get any type of reflection for the most part. Okay. This is more light shining on it and shining to you so you can see what's there. Okay. That's why I use the silver coat. I like that application. Okay. And the same thing with the frog. Like, if, if you just happen to put it up on the wall. See the difference? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how the light comes off it. Yeah. And if you angle it, even more so. <laughs> so you could put it on a stand like this and have it angled back and the yeah. difference in light okay. is, is totally different. Okay. So it's just a different effect yeah. of, of another application of, of yeah. glass. Mm -hmm. and, and then this guy is, again, solid black, so there is no light passing through, but then I, for the eyes, so you get a reflective look, I used an iridized coating. So again, you have the reflectivity like a mirror glass. And then of course one day Gina just showed me this and I'm like, oh my gosh. And she goes, I got green, I got this, and I got red, and I got blue, and purple, and gold. And I, I just took all of them. And, and I, I knew I would find a way to use it. So I just took it. Yeah. It's great stuff. Yeah, very different looking. Yeah, yeah it's, it's all Even different. This very reflective yeah, here. yeah like, it, like, like this one. This <clears throat> is good point. This is reflectivity. You can see oh, through it. Yeah. The light passes through, and that's why I want. I want the flag to be its own thing. Mm -hmm. And and with the uh, the translucent glass, you have that. But then I wanted the cross also to be its own thing. Yeah. So. I, I made it with the mirror glass. Very cool. Yeah, it's it's all big different. I mean, just how you how you use it. It's, it it's must like, be much more expensive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. A lot more expensive. Oh, yeah. I, I, I didn't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it. <laughs> Look, yeah. 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 They had me. She go, I go, oh, I love it. She goes, yeah. well, how many would you like? <laughs> <laughs> you know, how many would you would you like? So yeah, it, it's just. It, it doesn't matter, you know. I, if, if I like it, if you enjoy doing the work. Yeah, but it's beautiful. I can it. Yeah. It's just so different than traditional stained glass. It is. It's, yeah. It's, a, it's different. Same type of work, it, which mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about. Same type of cutting. You got to cut it out. You got to grind it. Just what you what you put around it, mm -hmm. what you frame it with. So um, I don't know if this is live or not, but oh, we're going to go for. We're going, we're going on. Okay, so uh, we did this. Like we talked about this already, you know, different types of applications and so forth and how you can do it. Now, these all came about. I'll show you how the fraud came. I was at Panera one morning. Just somebody had said they wanted a frog. And so on a napkin, I just drew this out and then I traced it onto another piece of paper went through a photocopter, blew it up, so now I have it a little bit bigger, and then I go to a light table, trace it out, with exactly what I want, just cl clean it up, and then I end up having this, added the crown, and you go from there to there. Mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's really not that difficult, you know, anybody can do it. I mean, from a tracing on a napkin, just, and I do it small because I can't, I'm have, I have a hard time drawing big, so I end up blowing it up. But it's easy for me to trace small and let the copier do your work. And then when you get it the size you want, then trace it onto a finished piece of paper and you go from there. Now on, on the crown, on this particular one right here, I didn't even have a fit for this. I knew I wanted it, so I just put the head on there and traced it, brought the size up and, and did it that way. Because I wasn't sure if I had the fit right. So I just did the crown after the fact, which I'll do here. We're going to do the tiara on this one same way after the fact. So, all right, so we talked about that. Um, so there was the pattern, how it came about. All right. 
No. Here's another one, which is a again free form. So Bert, you're on live. You have seven viewers on Facebook watching. All right. Oop. Sorry, we got started early, but uh, we can backtrack. Thanks for joining us. So, free form patterns again. Chimney, Santa Claus going down the chimney. You, I mean, it, it, the application is for not having a frame is is wide open. As, as you can see, there's almost dark fader. And then here's a Christmas wreath. So it's just a matter of finishing on the outside how, how you want it to go and, and what lead you're going to use to get the job done. Same way here. Got some mirror glass. You got translucent. The American flag. There's a lot of symbolism with this one. That's, that's why I did it. And of course, the frog, finished frog, which is what we're going to work on here shortly. So anyway, free form pattern. Santa. Put it together. Draw up what you want, or take it out of a book. It, it doesn't matter. It really, I mean, you can take a pattern out of a pattern book if there's one you like. You can apply it the same way to freeform lead as you can with copper foil. So, um, let's see. So we've got that. We've got that. We're going to go. The tools that you need are just not far from what you already have. So you've got your. The biggest thing is you're going to use lead shears instead of the foil shears. Okay, the lead shears, there's a little bit wider tolerance that you need in between the glass pieces to, for placing the lead in for displacement. So in a pattern such as this one, you're going to use your lead shears on the inside pieces of glass. Outside, it doesn't matter because it's a finished piece of lead. It doesn't matter that you displace that. You're just going to lay it out there so you can use your regular scissors here. But inside where there's going to be lead in between two pieces of glass, you want to use your pattern shears to displace that. And what I'm talking about is, I'm sure you know that already, but see how it, there's a little displacement there? That's where the lead goes between two glass pieces. You know that with copper foil work. Okay? So uh, any type of foil work, same thing, you displace it. Lead or foil, either one. So. Foil shears, you have to buy those. Lead shears or lead cutters, you have to buy your lead cutters. Okay? You can use the regular hardware store version of these, but these are very sharp and, the, and they have a straight cut. Some of the hardware store are both, they're beveled on both sides so you don't get a straight cut. You get just a pointed cut. All right? See, see the pointed cut there? I, with that, you can get your pointed cut that way. But if you flip them over, you can also get a nice straight cut. So if you're doing a joint where you're butting up against another piece of glass, you want a nice straight cut. Or you want an angle cut, so just twist them a bit, and you come up with an angle cut that would fit here. All right? So that's the difference in the tools. That The rest of it, the lead stretcher, I left that one out. You also need a lead stretcher. We talked about that a little bit yesterday. You want to stretch your lead because there is a lot of slack in it. It is lead, so it's soft. So you want to pull it so it's real tight. That way it'll wrap really well around your pieces. You won't get any rattle in, in your pieces. Need a little bit. But you try to stretch it out so when it is hanging, if you have it hanging on a wall like this one, in a, in a few months, this, won't, this lead here won't sag down. Okay, you want to take all the slack out so when you finish your piece, nothing's going to sag. Like, especially at this point, all the gravity is pulling right here. But I, what I did, two things. I put lead joints there so it's not going to pull as much because there's support here and here and here. So that's how you can build your pattern. You build in lead seams, lead joints, so the gravity doesn't do its job. Same thing here. Probably the only space you have for gravity to do its job is right here. But I wrap those really, really tight. Stretch the lead, wrap them tight, so you're not going to get that pull on those.
So, lead stretcher, we have one here. I'm going to demonstrate how we do that also. All right? Other than that, the tools are the same. You're going to cut your glass, you're going to grind it, you're going to go, go to work. If I understand correctly with those scissors, if you cut inside, you cut on the line? Cut right on the line. On the line, can, okay. Yeah, you can line that up just by looking looking at your scissors on the line. You can go this way, I'm left-handed, so I look at my scissors right on the line. And then I go right down, line it up on the line, and cut. Now, if you're right-handed, you're probably going to look on this side. Okay, and again, you can be somewhat close if you're going to have the, you're going to maintain the look of the straight line. If you're off a little bit, this lead will move back and forth. And if you've stretched it, if it's a straight line and you stretch that lead, you're gonna, it's going to look like a straight line. Even if you cut off a little bit, because you can fix it with the grinder. You can fix it as you're, as you're scoring. The, the repair can be made. This is not critical. The, what you want to do is get them cut out, allow for the lead that's going in there, and then move on. I, I, I'm a big proponent of, you know, don't sweat all that small stuff because we can get real anal about our work. I, I'm, I'm the biggest, I, I abuse that the most. But don't sweat it because really the, the, what you want to do is just move on to the next step. Get it, get it, get it so it looks like what it's supposed to be. If it's a beard, you want it round. Have it look like a beard, and then you can fix it when you're grinding. Okay? All right. Yeah. It's 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 not a big it's not a big deal. And it, as you do it more, you'll you'll learn how to fix it. You know, and just and just go on. So uh, we're gonna do the frog. We're gonna start working on the little frog here. All right. Let's see. Cutting the pan. I talked about that glass cutting. So. I already cut this out. I pre-cut the frog based on what I had here, this design. This is going to end up being the female version of, of the male frog. So, uh, we talked about, for anybody else tuned in, we started making the uh, frog's feet. And all that was, was taking the lead, gripping it in here, and just bending it around a pair of grosiers. These are the glass grosiers you use to break your glass with. But they also work for bending lead where you want it. So, take out your cutters, cut that piece off. So you end up right here. So you do two of these versions, you tack it right here, and then you apply it where you want it, and it's actually gonna go on the end of these legs, okay? So I did a little pre-work here. So we're just gonna go and work on finishing this up. I'm going to close this. And again, soldering uh, with lead is the same. Same flux. I, I like to use the paste flux on here and just tack it. And you're going to tack it in one spot. And then you can move on and get it where you want it in, in this design. But I like to tack these shut so it doesn't keep coming open like this because you're going to move it, you're going to move it, okay? And every little movement's going to open back up again, so I tack them, okay? And then we go on. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on this guy. And just ask questions. If you have questions, just go ahead and um, shout them out. Now, the lead work. You have different angles on your cuts, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more. These pliers have a nice straight edge and they're very sharp. These are, these are great pliers. Fan out lead cutting. So there's your straight cut there, okay? And you can tilt it ever so slightly and get a nice miter cut, all right? Then you can tilt it even more so and get an extreme miter. That's how sharp they are, okay? So you can get an extreme miter cut for like right here where these meet up. Now, the better you can miter your cuts, the better it'll solder in the end. Okay, you're gonna get a nice tight fit and you're gonna get a nice clean solder joint. So that's the importance of having a good set of lead cutting tools. All right, so we've covered that. So I'm gonna move on and we got this set up. Here he is in combinations of H channel and 
Yes. What's the other one? <laughs> C, C came. C, yeah. Yeah. Border came, I call yeah. it. Yeah. Good question. And that's what I'm using here. In between the pieces, you want to do your H came. All right? It's like a little I beam. You use that in the border. Now, sometimes I use that on the edging because it has this recession here. It, it's, it's receded so you can sink a hook in there. And I like doing that. So the hook is kind of hidden as opposed to putting it right on a flat edge because I, I, sometimes it doesn't attach well for me. If I can load it up with solder in here and then sink that hook in there, it, it works a little bit better for me. But there is a border cane. U-channel, okay, see the difference? It's one-sided. So, Bert, you've got 17 people watching online, and they're asking you to... To slow down your hand movements a bit, because you're kind of whip them back and forth past the camera. Okay. So if you could play to the, play to the lens a little bit. Okay. No problem. I will and do that. Slower. All right. Sorry, hand folks. Motion sinks. This okay. is to lead or zinc. No, this is lead now. Okay. This is this is similar to zinc. Okay. Okay, but same same way. It is just one sided. The opening is here. It's a channel. We call it C channel. Okay. So. It has one opening and that is a nice finish on one side to go over this. Okay. This is how I'm going to finish this piece up. Okay. All right. So we'll go back to the H came. There it's two sided. Let or glass goes on one side, sinks in. Another piece of glass can go on the other side. That's that's the H came. All right. So I've already wrapped these together for construction. This is these are going to be the arms here. So I'm going to pin these up a little bit tighter. And we're going to come through. And I'm going to start soldering just to hold these up. Now, I have an issue, a little bit of an issue here. Let me see if I can get this out. I want this nice and snug here. It kind of worked itself out. Uh, so we're gonna get, just give this a shot right here. So, that's good. All right, iron should be going. So, if you have questions, just go ahead and uh, just ask them. It's not a big deal. We can we can go and answer questions and, and at the same time. As we're working, I'm going to flip these so kind of see how yeah, that... I, mean, I didn't realize it before, but you do have each channel everywhere. I did. Even not just the place like where you've got the hooks. Correct. So that's your preference, yeah. Right. I went H channel. And just at the time, that's what I had, but this is a nice different choice for that. It is a nicer finish because it does look like zinc like you thought it was. It's just a, a, a nicer finish, but again, when you're putting hooks on here, it's a it's a different deal. It's mm -hmm. again your choice uh, if you want that nice finish. Probably the better choice, but at the at the point where I was doing that, I probably ran out and I didn't well, want to stop. I never noticed until you said something. Yeah. So it looks fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be on the wall. Most people don't go up and go. Exactly. Hmm, let me see that. Right. Oh, okay. But you can see as as I talked about. I sank the hooks down in there, and mm -hmm. it's just, it, it hides them, and you can load up solder without having a big blob on a, on a flat edge. Mm -hmm. You know, it, again, and it's just And you didn't even put that hook preference. in a joint somewhere. You know, I was always taught, make sure it's in a joint so it's stronger, but right. I guess when you're working with that, it doesn't matter. Well, I did it on this side, yeah. and that's a good point. I did it here, and I thought, you know what, I, I, I stretched this really tight, so I am pretty sure... When this hangs up for a while, which it has hung up for a couple months, it's not going to pull away. It hasn't yet, and I'm pretty sure it's not going to. 
Wow. But you're right. You really want to put your hook on a joint. Then you got extra support there. Yeah, because you got the whole weight hanging on that, that piece of lead there, right? Right. Mary, with all the great questions. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, not at all. Very good. What's okay. the difference between the one you use and the one that we've got on a, uh, a roll? This one? This one. The H. There is no difference. It's the same. It's the same stuff. Okay. Same same ingredients, everything. But now we're going to talk about stretching, since we have a we have a vice holder right there. Gina, our vice holder. So you, you do want to stretch your lead, okay? And we're to that point where uh, yeah, we can do this. So I'm going to stick it in the vice. And Mary, maybe Mary can put her hand on it. So we're going to just push down on there and just. Brace, brace it, okay? So take a pair of grocers and see how it's all kinked, and twisted and bent and everything? So. So what I do, after I've stretched it out, then I go ahead and cut it, because sure as, as long as this is, sure enough it's going to get caught on something and kink again, and I don't want that to happen. So Can you stretch it another time? You can stretch okay. it again. Yeah, I stretched this yesterday, okay. and see how we just laid it to the side. But this is a border came also, but it's a real thin one, okay, much thinner, so your glass He's not going to have to have any chips to put to apply that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's real difficult to use. So that's why it's all watered up. Right there. Well, all right. Even this H channel is very very skinny compared yeah. to compared to this. Right. And again, that's you know, it, it just depends on what look you want. There's different thicknesses of of the lead. It just depends on the look. I just wanted real. A real thin look here. Here I wanted a little more bulky because mm -hmm. it's a, it's a little, uh, it's froggy Buddha. So yeah. it's got to be big. <laughs> so what I was talking about is, or what Mary's question was, is the thickness of the lead here. So I chose a bulkier thickness for this piece as opposed to the thickness of the lead here. All right, so you get a bulkier lead line, and again, it it helps with the look of what you're trying to get out of the out of the piece. I wanted, you know, bulky, heavy, froggy Buddha. This one I wanted a little more streamlined. Mm -hmm. Okay, so So we want to touch these, touch these up so I can move on. Because every time it's set down, then you get this. Then you gotta retighten it. So we're gonna touch this up a little bit. And this is a gel flux. I don't know what you use, it doesn't matter, gel or liquid. I like to use a gel flux when I'm just touching stuff because then it doesn't flow through and contaminate the backside. And if you do, then if you don't solder it right away, then you gotta go back in, scrape it off, or, or take a piece of steel wool, take it off, because it starts to corrode the metal. So I just do a small touch there. Solder. There we go. Get your solder there, elevate it. And just touch a piece here. And we're going to just, this is in the way probably. We're going to hold that together and just touch it. All right, that's, that's all I need right there. All right. So all we did, just put a nice little joint there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you got to release your fingers because it gets pretty hot. Mm -hmm. So it's ready to go. So when I want to finish this, the, uh, the fingers, then I can just mount it right there, mm -hmm. which is what we're going to do right now. We're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. Now, 
since we did this, see how it's, I've soldered and there's some points left, little tips there. I'm going to take those off because that will keep that from seating really, really well. So we're just going to take those tips off and so it gives it a nice flat edge. Okay, so now it's nice and clean. So when I put this up against there, it'll fit better. Okay, so I'm going to do that again. I'm going to just take a little bit more. And again, these are super sharp, so you get a nice, clean cut. All right, so we'll go, we'll go over to the feet, hands and feet. I'm going to put this way. Let's put some pins down because it's just going to move on me if I don't. And we'll just force it in like so. All right? Okay, so got that. Stacking that right in there. All right, so she's good to go. And again, just touch it with some solder on there. What temperature are you using when you're done there? To be honest, it's not hot enough, so I'm going to dial it up a little bit. It's down to 360. I like mm. I like it 460. 460. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then you uh, see how long it took me to melt this. Let's take that off. So we're gonna hit this again. All right. So that's the joint we did. That's hot. Okay. Just a nice clean little joint, all right? Nothing serious because I'm going to come back and finish it later. You know, just enough to get it so we can mount it on the, on the end of this. All right, that's what we want. And we can tilt it and mount it and do whatever, all right? Anybody want to try the hand of soldering? Hmm. I don't care. Oh, no. <laughs> was that a no? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a moan. <laughs> oh, come on. So, if you look at these, see how they're tilted a little bit? Okay? The, the, the hands are tilted. You can do that. You can go straight on it. it again, it doesn't matter. It, it just, uh, <clears throat> whatever you're trying, whatever application you're trying to get. So, we've got it. I've got it lined up. So, we're going to. Again, just touch it with a, some gel flux. Pull out the iron. Let my solder go. Hit, hit the solder tip and just punch it here. Now, you want to hold this together because this could come apart with it, where the arm is. Because that's where we soldered to keep it shut. smooth it out a little bit. All right, let it cool off. And there you go. So that's the arm that's going to go right here. So we're going to do two of those, obviously, and then we do the feet. And that's where I leave the feet till the end and then attach everything. The border came and then we'll do the feet, <coughs> we'll do the feet last. So we talked about getting the length of them, right? What do you think? Two middle ones down a little bit, right? So we'll just clip this one off, take a look. Yeah, looks like clipping fingernails. All right, so that's, that's where we are. Okay, so that's that. So now we can go back here. Now there's gonna be a border came at the bottom here. So I wanna, everything is fitting here. Again, this in free form, you kinda wanna solder as you go as you finish parts of it so you won't have issues of glass moving because it likes to it likes to do its own thing so you want to get get it soldered and get it in place so you don't have any extra movement so that's what we're going to do right now and then we'll start putting pieces together all right but I want to get it I want to get it uh, 
stabilized. So touch it there, touch it here, we're going to hit that joint, we're going to hit this one, we're going to hit that one. And again, same soldering as lamp soldering, but you're only, you're only doing one, one, one little joint, and the rest of it, you do, your, you do your grinding on your glass piece, you do your grinding well, you do your lead stretching, you do that well, you do your wrap nice and tight, it, it looks nice and clean, okay? Round, square, whatever. On, on a square wrap, you're going to have to grind that edge a little bit to get it rounded, so it'll wrap around tight, but for the most part, any any other type of piece you use, if your lead is tight, your glass is ground well, you get a nice look. All right. So I'm going to give that a push in. I'm going to hit this. Clean it up, get a better joint. Dial this down a little bit, it's a little too hot. Alright. So, solder that. The best thing too, when, when you're doing lead, you want to stick, try to stick that tip right in the seam where you're going. And it, it just fits ni nice in there, and you don't get end up with a you don't end up with a blob of solder. And the way you get your solder to flow is you just flux and reflux. Okay, and that helps the solder move along. And the nice thing is with this iron is you can, like, like it wasn't working like I wanted, so I just dialed it up. There's no rheostat. It's already in the handle. It's, it's, a, it's a great iron to use. Okay, so we've got that. So I'm going to shove this up a little bit. I'm going to need a little more flux on there. Okay. This is where you want to just run it up along there. You're using 6040? 6040, yep. I am. I don't want that there. So just run it along the seam. And it melts down right into the right into the crack there. And uh, I'll just show you on this guy what I did. Just hold it, hold your iron in the seam here and it just melts right down into the seam. Okay? With the right amount of flux, right temperature, it melts into the seam, and that's what I was trying to do so the look is, is a little clean. So again, you don't have a big, big blob of solder there. Same thing with soldering your uh, lamps. You want a nice flow of solder so it doesn't look like it changed the flow of that, of that part right there. So that, flow, that line flows right into the leg, the leg continues. So that's what you're trying to get. So we're gonna this guy's this guy's off. Alright, so he fits there. And what, when I just pushed on that to to uh, solder, I moved that out of place, so we're gonna put a pin right there. That work good. We should be able to get that seam right there. Excuse me.
so we got that stable. All right, so now I'm going to continue on. I'm going to put these pieces in. All right, so let's see, that's the size. You cut a miter. Pull out your shears or your cutters. We're going to take. I want to take a look at this to see if it's going to be straight enough because that's a straight piece. I want it to look straight. I don't want any just small curves in there. So we're going to go cut this off. And we're going to fit it in here. All right. So we're going to pull that pin and set it down in there. Now it fits except it needs a miter cut. So again, we're going to tilt the lead pliers or the lead covers to that angle, clip it off, turn it around, and stick it in there. Now it's not quite as enough what I need, so it's we're gonna do a little more of a miter and then put it back in. And we're gonna do it one more time, a little steeper. Okay, so now here's here's where you gotta know what you're gonna use on the edge of your design. Okay, so I'm bringing I'm bringing this piece out to the edge. This is the complete edge of the frog. Okay, this edge here, you need to know about where you're gonna put it. So that edge is this thickness. So this line is coming out to that edge. It's underneath here, but it's coming to this edge. We have to account for this border lead. So I'm going to put this piece on there, and I'm going to mark it. Okay, we've got to cut it back that far. And we're going to cut it back so the border came will go around there, and we'll have a nice joint that we can solder. If it's not cut back, it's going to stick up. You're going to have a bump there. All right, so we've got that. We've got the angle. I'm going to take it back. Up. I'm going to take it back a little more because we can solder that in. We can fill in with solder on that angle if we need to. So I've marked that with, with just my fingernail, okay? I'm going to set my cutters right on there at that angle, okay? Quick cut good to go. Alright, so she goes in there, then my lead piece is going to go over the top of that. So that's a nice fit, it doesn't rock, it just goes right over the top of it, so we're good there. So I'm going to drop this piece down, okay, that's going to go in, and i got to do the other side, so we're going to do the other side first. There's a piece here. Oh great, thank you. Alright, we'll go there. So angle cut, you know that already, pull the pin, not quite the angle of, of the other side, so I'm going to take it back, alright, so there's that, again mark it with your fingernail, pull it out, we got the lead line there. We got the angle that we want it cut at. And there she goes. All right, back in. And we're gonna drop this piece in. There, that's that. And we got an issue here. So what I did is soldered that too low. This goes right there, like that. Gonna have to cut another one. Mm -mm. I'll just move the leg up. I'll just move this leg up into break. there. Oh. Yeah, I'll just break that solder that solder joint there and move the leg up. So. This is fit here. This is fit here. We're going to put a push pin here. Okay, so that's good. 
I'll, I'll break that seam, move that up. But we're going to continue on with this so we can get it wrapped up. So, you have the edge here. I've wrapped that piece. you got to back off so you can put a border on that. So you can mark that with your thumbnail on where you need it, the border, <coughs> to pass by. So we've marked that twice. And then line up your lead cutters. Snip that off. And snip this off. Can you just push it in and it takes the form easily? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't show you that, did I? Yeah. This was a straight piece, and you just bend it, bend it into that piece right there. These are the ones you want to get first. Okay. And then you can bend this to the outside. Okay. Now, see how it pulls away? You can just take it back and just bend it in. Now, It's not a big issue on this one because there's going to be a glass piece that it's going into, so it's going to take that shape when you when you force it down. Okay. So put that in. Now this I might have an issue here on this seam of the lead going by there. I think it's a little too far out. So I always just fit it. And then mark it again if we have an issue. Okay. So we're going to clip that off ever so slightly. <clears throat> Nobody wants to try their hand at soldering? Anybody? Gina, you're up. Really? <laughs> go, 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 go. go. <laughs> <laughs> what about that yes. over here? Yeah, go ahead. Your glass seems to be going. Yep. Mm. What the, the uh, part that sticks out? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> it, it may stick out. I, I can grind that. Okay. Or I can just put lead right by it. And it just wrap, it'll wrap because oh, okay. that's a drop wrap, right? That's a mm -hmm. drop right into that spot. And you wouldn't even be able to tell. But if it's me, I'm going to grind that. You're grinding? I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So two things. We've got to clean this up, fix this up. Now, what, what I also notice here is that to get this tilt, this, this miter is wrong. So we're going to have to cut this piece of lead also at a different angle for this to be able to seat up there. That's what happened. This was this piece of lead was too long when I put it together. So we'll cut that and then this whole thing will move up into that seam right there. Okay? I'm not sure when we'll do that, but we're gonna go on and get Yeah, that's one big piece you have looped around that whole body, right? Yeah, we're gonna go yeah. we're gonna wrap right here. And then we're going to wrap down here. Well, the piece you're talking about trimming, are you going to be able to do that in there? I mean, you don't have to take that out of it. Oh, it's going to, I'll have to, you have to take it out. I'll have to unsolder it. Yeah. Yeah, I sure will. And the whole body loop, you'll have to take out, right? No, no, just, I'll, I'll just drop this off. Unsolder, pull this out. And then we'll, you can we'll do that. Let me get some water okay. and I'll show you. like to see you fix things because we have to do that a lot. <laughs> yeah, okay. Not a problem. We'll do that. So I'm going to pull the pin out. And, and that's another reason why I don't, I don't completely solder everything. I just because, tack it yeah. because you may have. Face, yeah. Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. You might have to fix one. So the nice thing is what what's, what have we soldered before It's going to be cut off so it's not a big issue. No. It's going to disappear. So I'm going to hold it on there. And then just pull it off. Wow. So, okay. That so that's my, that's where I'm going to solder again. So there it is. So now, you talked about two things. We want to fix that that miter, and we want to grind this. So what I'm going to do is pull this 
put this back in here. We know that's where it's going to end up, right? Mm -hmm. So how, how much do you think I want to grind? Oh, just a little bit, or do you want? Should I bit. contour it? I would say a little bit. Okay. What do you think, Mary? Contour. <laughs> okay. I think I can't see it good from over here. I think but, a yeah. little bit with a, a contour, bit. so so it meets down here. So yeah. it's it's gradual, because mm -hmm. then if it's not gradual, then it's going to be a hump in the lead, and it won't, it won't look right. To the trained eye, is yours. It won't look right, <laughs> right? And we don't want that. I'll be right back. thing for folks at home, get yourself a good grinder that just mm -hmm. tears through it because you don't want to spend your time grinding. It's your friend, your grinder is your friend, but you want it to do its job really fast. So, yeah, perfect. there oh, you go. <laughs> okay, so we're going to cut that What's off. The size of this? I'm going to trim this back now. Did we mark it? We marked it. So just pull it out, oh, okay. just, just like that, out. ever so slightly. Now the hard part is just going to be cutting that angle. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, so I'm going to do a point first. Let's see what that angle is. I'm going to do a point on it. Okay, I'm going to get it pointed, and then I'm going to turn the pliers back and taper cut that at a real harsh angle. And hopefully that's going to do our do the work we want, or I'll replace it. All right. So we got that. Now, a shortcut I did over here because I was having that issue on the other side is I cut right here. That way, all I was doing was fitting this piece here, this one single piece. If I cut it here, so here's what happens: you cut it there, solder joints there. This covers that. You never um, even know you did it. Yeah, okay. okay. Mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna review that again. That, I did that pretty fast. So, mm. if you're having an issue with this seam right here, getting that miter cut, and you and you you tried to try, cut it here, then you have this as one piece as I did here. So then you get it to where you need it to fit, and I think we've got it here. But if it's just a single piece, you can pull it out, put it back in, pull it out, put it back in. I did the same thing over here. Then it's going to be a solder seam right there, and then the arm is going to cover up the entire thing, and you don't even know it was there. Mm -hmm. So you you got to learn those little shortcuts that make your life easier. Again, it's it's not about stressing. You you're doing this to relax, okay? So make it as relaxful or as relaxing as possible by by taking shortcuts. Now this looks like it may need a little little grinding, but I, I may let that go. We'll see. Okay, so we got that. We did the miter cut there, all right? So I'm going to push it out of the way. It still may be a little long, but I think we got it. Okay, see how now everything's back in order. We, we took away that gap. We ground this down, and we had a big gap. Actually, the gap was down here, right? So we, f we pull it back out, recut, recut the lead, which was blocking it from sliding up here and fitting into the glass. So that's done. We ground this down. I'm feeling bad about that now. <laughs> so we ground it. Now all I'm going to do is push that back in, make it fit nicely, and then just solder that up. Okay, I, I, I had the solder, original solder joint there. I'm going to clean that up and kind of stretch it up to here. All right, but first we're going to pin it down. All right. All right, so we got that. Put the flux on it. Just 
So you took almost a quarter of the inch? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. good amount. And I knew I knew I should have recut I should have cut it and I should have put a seam right here. I didn't. I should have, but I didn't. I thought I figured I better I figured the class would want to see that. In case we had a problem. <laughs> That's what I figured. Alright, so we're gonna clean this up right here. Pull that off. Stretch that to there. And there you go. Not so bad, but again, I'll come through when I do my finish up soldering. I'll, I'll taper that so that line goes away. All right. Let's wipe that off. All right. So we got this done. We got these in. Miter cut. Again, to, to reiterate, reiterate, flat cut on your lead. This will get you a nice sharp miter if you've got to fit it into an angle. All right. This is a point. This is like if you do if you do a point, you want to. This is like a three-way intersection. If you've got pieces coming in at three spots, a point is what you want to use for that. All right. We don't have that here, but we're good. Okay. So. Hey, Bert. Yes. Can you just remind us all uh, what our project is? What we're working on is the little froggy Buddha. And here is the mate to the froggy Buddha. This is, this is the male froggy Buddha. Mm -hmm. And we're working on a female. Mm -hmm. All right? Very good. That's what, we're, that's what we're going to end up with. We may not end up with that yet today, but that's what's going to happen. <laughs> Getting a lot of good questions. So, All right, so we end up, we're going to wrap the border. All right, so you want to go with the, you want to go with the flat cane mm -hmm. on the edge? It'll clean it up. It'll give it a different look than that. So we're going to go with a flat border. All right. C cane on the edge here. Okay. So Does she have a crown or ears? That's a great... That's it. That's why I don't use this. Because I can't put the crown in. I knew it. Okay. So we're not going to wrap it with that. We're wrapping it with this one. So, what I do is kind of do it by hand. All right, this is where we this is where we stretch it so there's marks all over it. So we're going to clip that off. So just lay it in like so. All right, put it in there. Right there, nice and now again, we did stretch this, right? We stretched it, took the kinks out, so it's going to be a nice, nice solid fit. All right, as we lay it in, so I'm going to cut it in. I'm going to cut extra. All right, just in case we don't want to, we don't want to come up short. So we're right to that point right there. We're going to pick it up over the top, eyeball where we want it. I'm going to just, I'm still not going to cut it exact. I'm cutting it a little longer. And then I'm going to lay it in. Okay. And then I'm going to do a final snip right here. It in there. There we go. All right. Put 
push pin on that. Now here's what happened. I measured the borders with a thicker piece of lead and we went with a thinner piece on the outside. Doesn't matter. Didn't change anything. All I'll do is just push push these over so they're they measure evenly. So what I'm doing is I'm tucking this down because I got a little space here. So I'm tucking this really tight, especially at the top. And you want to take all that slack out, push it all down, okay? So the glass won't rattle when you get done. All right? Push this down. You can hear that. You don't want that. So what, what I see down here is this is a little long. So we're going to pull that pin out. See, it's so long it won't even come out by itself. Pull the pin. We're going to clip this off. And again, if it's a little short, if there's more space than you wanted, you can fix that with a solder, with a solder joint. All right, so we got this. We got a little bit of space here. We're going to just move this up. And center it like so. So there's that. That's centered. We'll fix those seams. Okay, so we're there. This goes there. Put the feet on there. We're going get, to get the eyes out. All right, like so. Before we go, I, I do want to show you how we're going we're to put a crown on it. Okay, I, I, this one's going to have a tiara. So the eyes we know are going to end up right here on those seams. When I, when I get done, the eyes are going to be there. So I've got one eye set up. Okay, now, this rests, the eye rests in the channel. Okay, so what do we have to do with the lead? we got to trim it off. We've got to trim it, trim it back so it fits into the channel. So we're going right up against the eye, like so. All right, right to the edge of the eye. We're going to clip it. We're going to clip this one, okay, but you know that's probably not enough, so I'm going to move this around and clip it off a little bit more down here, okay, because we're going to need that allowance for the lead line or the lead channel. So we clip that off, bring this back around, and the eye should fit right in there, okay. Now the eye fit. Now the eye fits right in that channel. Again, I accounted for this being a, a, a thicker lead, but it's not. All right. So we're going to tighten this up. All right. So we got that eye there. Push pin. Lock in place. Thank you. pliable, easy to use, just wrap it tight and clip it off. Okay, and then we're going to go back down here, clip off some more. Alright, we got that. Maybe a touch more. Okay, so now we got that in. Now here's where you can do stuff with, with lead on the fly. All right, you've got same thing I did here. I finished the frog, and I and I just thought, you know, frog prints. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a crown on it. So I thought I'll, I'll just draw the crown after the fact after I get stuff lined up. So that's how I did it. So on this one, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do a tiara. So push this out of the way. Get some paper. 
slide this in like so. Now, do you have another piece of glass to go over the eyeball like you did with the, mm -hmm. the Buddha frog? Mm -hmm. I do. I do, but it, she's going to have eyelashes, and I didn't prepare the eyelashes. But for the eyelashes, I'm going to do this little, <laughs> this little silver copper wire, and just they're going to be along here like so. Uh -huh. I didn't prepare that, but that's that's how it's going to look. Yeah. All right, so that's what, that's what we're going to. So I, I'm not going there today. We're going to do the tiara. I'm going to move this up a bit. All right, that's about good work. So, you've got to account for that space, though. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Okay. So, uh, what have we got? We've got, i got a jewel here. I'm going to put a jewel right there. Like so, a colored jewel. So, that's a little big, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have that in line. So we're going to go up like so. And across like that. And down. See, this, this, this eye part's going to go here. So you're drawing your pattern on the fly here. That's right. We're just going to do it right as, as we think it should be. <coughs> All right? So, and that's the beauty of this. If you, you know, you decide you want something, just add it. I mean, you can do it with anything too, but you know, I let it lends itself to that. That looks more like a pirate's cap. Line this up. Sink right in. Now we can use uh, we can use regular shears or pattern shears. Doesn't matter. But since that's what I've got, I'm going to use the pattern shears. Here, but that's a little too big, so I'm gonna have to scale that right back. And I need to take that be right back with you. So you may not want yours to look like the pirate's cap. That's where we are here. So use the silver coat. Let's just use as as possible. So we'll just take this off. 
So you guys, you guys all know how to do the cutting. Just try to take off as much as you can. But the part about this silver coat is you, it's hard to see your score line mm. because of, of the silverness of it. It's the same color as the score. <laughs> I thought you would have run that off the edge. It's gonna do it anyway. Yeah. Right? Well, it wouldn't break so, Look at that. That's a good point, Mary. A lot of people <laughs> just you're good. take it off the edge. Yeah. But you know what? It's gonna do it anyway. Why, why, why even waste the time to do it? Because if it wants to do it, it'll break off the edge. Yeah. Right? You didn't need to, you didn't need to score that for it to do that. So I do that, then I come at it the other way. And hopefully it'll break right where you want it to. Now there's a little bit left. Okay? So take your grocers and you go off there. Okay? Yeah, so I, yeah, you could do that, but you score and you pick back up. You got to find your line and this stuff. It's yeah. almost impossible to find out where you were. So I just take the whole thing off. Yeah, good. So, set it back in. Eyes gonna go there, and the eyebrow. This one's gonna go here. So that's what you have. Yeah, and then cute. gonna get. I'm gonna put a colored jewel, a teardrop, in that shape, but in a different color. It's gonna be right up there, and the two eyes will go in. So we'll have. It'll look something like this. Obviously not exactly like this, but more of a tear. And. Uh, how are you going to attach the, the gem? Oh, yeah, good question. I, because you, I didn't insert them into there, I didn't want to, I, difficulty factors impossible, next to impossible. So I just took uh, super glue, uh, a gelled super glue, mm -hmm. and just stuck them on there. I'll so you're just going to glue the that same on? Thing there. Yeah, I mean, I could cut the glass and insert, but no. yeah. again, why stress? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, you're supposed to do enjoyment. It's supposed yeah. to be an enjoyment, so. We're all done. We are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can review a little bit if you want to go through the review or uh, close it up. All right. Thank you very much, Bert. Thank you. Thank right. you. Thank you.